an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness. And the art of coaching. To help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life. Through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM Certified Wellness Coach. You are listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and I am going to go into, really, I'm going into the mailbag today because somebody asked a question, and they asked specifically, can you do an episode of do they really work on this? And the question was about TENS. TENS is transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. TENS. Can you talk about TENS or as you may know it, uh, electrical muscle stimulation, electrical nerve stimulation. So we're going to talk a little bit about it today and see what you walk away with. I think it's interesting. I pulled up a lot of research, uh, not an exhaustive of amount, but what I found and what I looked up, I think is pretty interesting. So uh, one of the interesting things to look at, uh, Tioli and On in 2021, they do something. There's there's something out there called stat pearls. And they're just statistical nuggets or pearls of information. And this was done in 2021 on TENS, on transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. And here's some of the things that they pointed out. Uh, first of all, it's a modality that uses an electrical current to activate nerves. And it's historically been done for therapeutic reasons. You put electrodes on the skin, you attach it to an electrical device, and it stimulates. They're all measured in hertz. There are lower frequencies and higher frequencies, all used for different things. And there are multiple brands out there. Now, I have used in the past multiple brands like Mark Pro and Compex and Power Dot, but there are numerous others out there. And some of them are really fantastic for what they are. But what are they? Do they really work? And how do they really work? So let's let's talk about this. Historically speaking, how long has this been around? I found this in the uh, Teoli and Ons 2021 Stat Pearls report that it dates back maybe until 60 AD where there's a Roman physician and he basically took symptomatic, uh, symptomatic patients that were having pain and exposed them to contact with an, a quote, electrical fish from the ocean and said, I think this will help you with the pain. And I don't know where they got that from. I think it's kind of funny. Like somebody was out swimming, got stung by a fish and said, oh, that really hurts. But my low back pain is much better. So much better. Let's go find that fish. Anyway, the early uses of this were to help people with migraines and back pain and gout. Now, we know even though things were used early, doesn't necessarily mean that they were effective. There were a lot of treatments that people used that weren't effective. And you can't just listen to Keith over there and Keith is going, well, it worked for me. I feel really good. And because it worked for me, it'll work for you. Well, that's an N of one. That's a one person observational experience. So what we don't know is that if Keith was feeling better anyway, and he just happened to have done electric stim, we don't know if uh, that if that just works for him, but it didn't work for anybody else. So that's why research is important, and that's why we have to get numerous research, parse the data, follow the information, and look at it and say, "Well, based off of this information, there is a correlation, a positive correlation, and it has to be statistically significant." which is why you can't just take whatever medicine and say it works for me, you should try it. Like that's why research is there. So with that said, let's look at some information that's out there because it does seem to be that there is some disagreement 
over which pain syndromes, what conditions are appropriate for TENS. So it can be used for aches and pains. It can be used for DOMS. And more and more, it's being used for workouts. So let's look at some of this. Re uh, electrical stimulation, there's numerous research that's shown through multiple studies that enhanced muscle remodeling and strength development between training sessions is done by adding in these electrical muscle stimulations. That's pretty cool. They have got one, two, three, four, five, six studies pulled up that, that show that there is uh, enhanced muscle remodeling and strength development done between training sessions. So what it means is you work out and then you do the, the electrical stimulation, the electrical muscle stimulation. You work out and then you do the electrical muscle stimulation, enhances muscular remodeling and strength development. Uh, it's pretty impressive. And then we've got a gentleman named Westcott. And Westcott, uh, I don't know if it's a gentleman. I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I said that. Y'all, I apologize. Ladies, my bad. Westcott, I don't know who he is or she is. But we're going to look at, they used a Mark Pro, which is a device I've used on a regular basis. To They're going to check for muscle improvements and performance and recovery. So this is what they did. Here we go. One hour of electrical stimulation to the right leg only. And then after a challenging se uh, session they did of eccentric leg extension exercises. So as you know, eccentrics or the deceleration, the lengthening of muscles, the negative phase, that it, that's, that's where your soreness primarily comes from, the eccentric phase. So if they want to test people on soreness and make them have DOMS, then they usually do things like eccentrics in order to produce muscular soreness. So they did this, all right, so in one leg, all right, and they, or they did both legs, but then they had one leg do the EMS, so uh, right leg on EMS, electrical muscle stimulation, or TENS, the transcutaneous neuromuscu uh, neural muscular stimulation. The next day, objective muscle strength and endurance assessments showed that significantly more repetitions on the right leg than the left leg because the right leg had the electrical muscular stimulation and the left leg had none. So they there was a significant difference after they did the eccentrics, only the right leg got the electric stimulation. The next day they went back, measured how many leg extensions they could do and the right leg did much, much better. So that seems to clearly facilitate recovery quite a bit. So that was a good piece of information. And then Westcott goes on with another study, Westcott et al. 2013 effects of electrical muscular stimulation, same thing, the Mark Pro, during the recovery period on calf muscles and fatigue. So here's what it was. Subjects performed calf raises uh, twice a week for 10 weeks with or without. So different groups with or without uh, the electric muscle stimulation between training sessions. Subjects that got the electric muscular stimulation in two different studies in the same study. So they did two kind of variables that they were looking at. So each study attained a significant increase in calf strength versus subjects that didn't do the electric stimulation. Interesting. Only the exercise plus electrical stimulation group in both studies showed significant reduction in calf fatigue. So I find it interesting that they have reduction in fatigue, but they're also working out. And the people that did just the calves or the people that did, uh, sorry, just the, the muscle stimulation or just the exercise had more fatigue, but people that did both together had less fatigue. And, and interesting. The results indicate that using these electrical stimulation devices during recovery can enhance resistance training by increasing muscle strength and decreasing the feeling of muscle fatigue. Very interesting. Also, the other thing about this, and, uh, we have Kemmler et al. 2010 talks about EMS is really gentle on the joints. So it reduces the risk of injury due to um, that not having weights, the absence of weights. So you don't have to have weights. You can do some things that 
stimulate the muscle, that strengthen the muscle, that don't put pressure on the joint. So if you think physical therapy, people that just had, um, you know, a, maybe a surgery and you want to keep the muscles activated and stimulated in a way that's not going to create any damage to the joints, then the EMS or the TENS is a good way to do it. According to Gregory and Bickel in 2005, voluntary contraction can cause a person to create selective motor unit mobilization from slow to fast twitch motors. You think about this, people might have altered means of recruiting fibers. But when you go through the EMS, there's non-selective contraction. So any muscle that's, that's in this electrode area is going to get stimulated. So it, it causes these muscles to stimulate involuntarily with EMS. So if you're creating these kind of muscular contractions and you're also developing patterns, then this is one of those things that says, oh, you're, you're doing this and then this, and, and maybe it's a restart. Maybe it is. All right, here's an interesting nugget. I've run into several companies that do whole body electric muscle stimulation workouts. You go to a gym and you put these things on, you wear these things and along your body, it's actually creating muscular stimulation while you're going through the workout. Now, people do this locally also. Uh, Compex, I know, is one of the first ones that were out there doing it. Now, PowerDot does it, uh, which is PowerDot's cool because it connects to your phone. Compex, great one, where they're battery powered. So the electrodes go on. Let's say that you have a tough time getting your rhomboids or low traps uh, to, to fire. And then you put this, or maybe have somebody else put it on that area, and then do some cobras, do some rows, and it's it's involuntarily contracting those muscles while you are voluntarily pulling through that range of motion while doing the exercises. So that might be a nice warm up. It might be a nice stimulation. It might be a nice activation to prepare the muscle for a more advanced workout, especially if things may not be firing the way you want them to fire. Well, let's look at this whole body workout. I'm going to say this. I'm interested in the whole body workout. I've been invited several times and I've never gone to do it. And I think they're really interesting. I, I'm not entirely sure about the practicality of it. Like how many times people will be like, okay, let me change clothes and then let me go put on this suit. But for those who don't find it impractical or for those who are interested in it, then there's some pretty good data out there about it. So if, if it's not impractical for you, then the outcomes for this are pretty interesting. We got several studies that are out there that talk and show whole body electrical muscular stimulation. The system allows for more comfort, ease of use than the old stuff that they used to do. And then it can be really helpful in rehabilitating patients that are going through therapeutic issues with musculoskeletal conditions. But it's also been shown to, to slightly improve body composition. It has increased muscle function in normal people, right? So increased muscle, muscle function. If you're just uh, run of the mill, let's go get a workout in, then, then we've got several studies here that have supported that. Now, according to this study by Young Sik Ji, and it's entitled The Efficacy and Safety of Whole Body Electromuscular Stimulation Applying the Human Body. So doing this whole thing, it says the electrical muscular stimulation device may not improve cardiopulmonary factors and physiological indications. But, uh, sorry, I said may not. I'm sorry, it says it may. <laughs> they may improve cardiopulmonary factors and um, psychophysiological indications. Now, psychophysiological indications are, and there are several other studies I looked at that said that people that do the TENS or the EMS while doing activity feel like they got more out of it. They feel like their workout was more productive or was better. So I find that pretty interesting. We have 
Weissenfels et al. 2019 does a comparison of whole body electromuscular stimulation versus uh, recognized normal back strengthening exercises for people with nonspecific low back pain. And what they found is that the electric stim and the conventional back strengthening protocols were comparable when it came to reducing this nonspecific low back pain. All right. Uh, that, that's very good. Very good. So we've got we've got Mick et al. 2018, the effects of an eight-week study for whole body electrostim on strength and power parameters when it comes to the leg muscles. And what they did is a combination of dynamic exercise and then superimposed submaximal whole body electrical muscular stimulation. And they found it to be effective in order to improve leg strength and power. They did say, however, in young healthy adults, the effect of superimposed uh, whole body EMS were similar to the effects of dynamic resistance training without EMS. The only exception was there was significantly greater strength in their leg extension, max force, max force production with the whole body EMS. My goodness. Well, it seems like, like the EMS is, is whether or not it's practical, it's certainly helpful. It seems that it is beneficial. Well, there are some side effects though. And we've got uh, Schallenberger and Fenister 2019. And when they looked at this, they, there are concerns, right? Contraindications. And those contraindications might be things like rhabdomyolysis. And there were seven found, they found seven cases of electromuscular stimulation wearing the whole body things of rhabdomyolysis, which is real significant muscular damage that has been done. Um, the list of exclusion criteria, they say in part, there's contradictory studies between different studies that show uh, malignancy and heart failure could be positive or negative. They also found that subjects intending to perform whole body electromuscular stimulation should undergo investigations by a physician comparing a screen uh, and getting, uh, sorry, comprising of a screen to check out if there are risk factors for rhabdo, that damage, that muscle damage. And then they point out two more things that educators and um, operators of these whole body studios, they really need to be um, regulated a bit more and regulating authorities need to be more aware of any of the problems that take place in the studios. And there needs to be more education and more safety done for these operators who are doing these studios. All right. Well, what's our takeaway with all this? TENS, EMS, electromuscular stimulation, beneficial in recovery? Yes. Could potentially increase your strength outcomes? Yes. Um, practical? Not always. But for some people, taking that extra step and say, look, I'll put on a whole body suit or let me put these in areas. Like if I wanted to get a little bit more out of my VMO, let me set up my, my unit on my VMO, do some activations, and now I can go into my workout knowing I've done a very specific activation. Absolutely. Absolutely. It might be beneficial. It might be worthwhile. And it might not be for everyone. But for those of you that can use it and can need it, it could be beneficial. All right. With that said, thank you so much for listening. I hope that answered the question. And, uh, and if you've got questions for me, you've got more things and you want to know, do they really work? Reach out to me, uh, Instagram at dr.rickrichie, or you can email me at rick.richie, R-I-C-H-E-Y, N-A-S-M.org. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.